Hey, today we're talking about image resolution, PPI and DPI. What does it all mean? I'm going to tell you on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey everybody, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions right here on Adorama TV. I hope you're already a subscriber to the YouTube channel. If not, go ahead and click that button down below. That way you'll get all the great new free photo content from me and the other photo hosts right here on Adorama TV. Also, go to AskDavidBergman.com. If you've got a photo question that'd be good for lots of people, I might answer it right here on a future show. And if you have a very specific question just for your own situation, I'm now doing one-on-one -on -one photo consultations over Zoom. So if it's a business question, creative or technical, it doesn't matter. I've probably dealt with it in my own career and can help you out. Go to AskDavidBergman.com to check that out. Now, I recently did a video about printing aspect ratios right here on Ask David Bergman, and I got a lot of questions on that. I kind of glossed over a part about pixels per inch, and I did get a lot of questions about printing resolution and picture resolution in general. For example, Garrett F. asked, can you follow up with resolution? That's an issue I have trouble with. Flora L. said, if you send a digital file to a client to print on their own, how do you size it? Ellie asked me, how many PPI do I need for printing an image? And Darshan D. said, I can generate a JPEG from RAW up to 60,000 DPI. What's the ideal DPI and why? So you can see this is obviously confusing for a lot of people. Let me see what I can do to make it a little easier to understand. Now, first of all, PPI and DPI, we have to talk about the difference. These two terms are often interchanged and they're confused even by working pros, but they are not the same thing. PPI is pixels per inch. That's how many pixels there are within one inch of a digital image on your computer. DPI is dots per inch. That's how many printed dots of ink are within one inch of an image that's been printed on paper from a printer. Let me explain a little more. The resolution of a digital image, when you talk about the resolution, all you're referring to is the total number of pixels that are in the photo. So let's go on the computer here. This is a picture of um, Sammy that I made recently for another video shoot for Adorama. And if we go here under image size and zoom in, we can see how big this image is. Five 1,472 pixels by 3,648 pixels. Now, I shot this with the Canon EOS 1DX Mark III camera that is a full frame uh, camera and that the sensor inside that body is physically 24 by 36 millimeters. That, that's what makes it a full frame camera. It's the same size as an old piece of 35 millimeter film. Now that sensor is covered with light sensitive photodiodes and it's really cool and complicated technology. But to simplify, each one of those diodes, let's say is a single pixel. Now, when we go in Photoshop, as you can see, and look at this image size, we can see how many pixels are in the image. This is an uncropped image straight out of the camera. 5472 by 3648 is the maximum resolution of that camera. Now, it's 5472 across by 3648 down. So if we multiply those out to see how many pixels are actually in that 24 by 36 millimeter sensor, I'll do the math for you. It's 19,961,856 pixels pixels. Now 19.9 million pixels. Every million pixels is also called what? A megapixel. So we can round that up and say this is a 20 megapixel image, right? So the photo industry loves to talk about megapixels. It's a great marketing term because lo a lower number of megapixels is lower resolution, which sometimes equates to lower image quality, but it's just one of the factors that affects image quality. So I'd say don't get too hung up on the megapixel, megapixel race. Most modern cameras have enough megapixels for general photography and printing, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Now let's get deeper into PPI. The best way I think I can explain it to make it simple is Let's imagine you have 10 apples, right? And you lay them out in a line and you wanna have them at 10 apples per foot. They're gonna be tight together, right? But in one foot, you're gonna have 10 apples. Now, if you say, take that same number of apples and lay them out at five apples per foot, you're gonna have two feet of apples, right? It's the same number of apples. It just takes up more space since there's more space between each apple, but it's the same thing with pixels per inch when we're talking about pixels. Let's pull up another frame here. This is Sammy's sister Jackie that I was I photographed for that same video shoot. And let's go under image size here and take a look at the size of this image. Now I shot this with the EOS R mirrorless, full frame mirrorless, so it's a bigger sensor. And uh, to be fair, what I did was, just for full clarification, I resized this image a little bit. I shrunk it down to 6,000 by 4,000 pixels just to simplify the numbers because the, the numbers would be too confusing otherwise. So um, the PPI setting here, the, the resolution, it says 
300 pixels per inch. That's how many pixels we're cramming into every inch of this image. Now we can change that pixels per inch without changing the actual resolution. We can make that change without changing the number of pixels that are in the image. We can either compress or expand the density of the pixels, but again, it doesn't change the resolution. So let me show you here at, first of all, one thing to be very aware of when you're in Photoshop and working with image sizes, right here, this resample box is very important. If you click resample, when you make these changes, it's actually gonna change the overall resolution, the number of pixels in the, in the image. But we don't wanna do that, so we're gonna uncheck that. It's not gonna resample the image. We are just changing the pixels per inch, and that's gonna make the change to how wide or deep and deep the image is. So at 300 pixels per inch, we can see this 6,000 by 4,000 pixel image is 20 inches wide by 13.3, 13 and a third inches down. If you do the math, 20 times 300 is 6,000. So that's how it works out. You know, if we were to spread those pixels out and only go to 100 pixels per inch, that then becomes a 60 inch picture, right? But at a lower pixel per inch at a, at a lower density, right? So the more pixels per inch, what difference does it make, right? The more pixels per inch, the closer the pixels uh, gives you a smoother image. Those pixels, when they're tighter, it's gonna be smoother. But of course, it's gonna be a smaller sized image when you tighten those up. Darshan asked about generating a JPEG with 60,000 DPI, probably from his raw converter. When you export that, you can choose what the he said DPI, he really means PPI. You can choose what that PPI is. And as I've explained, no matter what you set it at, it really doesn't matter because it's not gonna change your resolution. Really all that matters is the number of pixels in your final image. So you might wanna just set that so that you're gonna get roughly the size of the image that you need if you're printing an 11 by 14 or an 80 by 120, right? Um, so, how many, pixels though, how many pixels though do you want per inch? The rule of thumb in general is that you want 300 pixels per inch to get a clean print or a clean image. Now clients sometimes will tell you, you might be uploading to a website, a printer website or something, and they might say they want a file that's 300, PP, 300 DPI. A lot of times they say DPI, again, they really mean PPI. But if they say that, that means nothing unless you know the output size. A 20 by 30 at 300 PPI is very different than a four by six at 300 PPI. Those are very different files. So you need to know, if you wanna give them a, an image that's the exact size, you need to know how big the image is gonna be. Now, to, to, to get back to DPI, physical printers use DPI. That's the dots of ink for every inch of printing, dots per inch. So just like PPI, the more dots you have per inch, the smoother the print is gonna be, but it doesn't really correlate directly with PPI, the PPI of your file. The printing software built into the printer and the, the drivers, that's gonna do all the work to take your image and do what it needs to do to calculate how much ink to spray onto the paper. So DPI is really more of a printer thing that you don't really have to worry so much about when you're talking about resolution. The more pixels that that printer, of course, has to work with, the more, you know, the higher the resolution, the file that you give it, the better quality the print. If you feed it a low res image that's only, let's say, 10 PPI at the size you're printing, it's gonna look horrible, especially up close. That leads me to also viewing distance. Viewing distance is a big factor. That 10 PPI image might actually be okay on a billboard that's four blocks away. But for most standard size prints, I personally find that the lowest I like to go is about 100 PPI and will still get away with decent quality, especially since in most cases at 100 uh, PPI, you're gonna be making a pretty big print and you're gonna be viewing that from kind of far away. I still wanna get 300 PPI whenever possible, that um, 1DX Mark III file that's 5472 by 3648. Let's go back and look at that again. At 300 PPI, it's actually 18.24 inches by 12.16 inches. So that's a 300 300 PPI, that's a pretty big print. That's a foot and a half wide. If I need to make a bigger print than that, I can change this to 100 PPI and it's gonna be 54.72 by 36.48. That's four and a half feet wide. So I'd probably be standing back quite a bit and it would look fine even at 100 PPI. Now there are other factors of course that affect the perceived quality of a printed image, including the subject matter. Um, trees, for example, might need more detail than skin and also the type of paper you're printing on can have an effect as well. So it's not just PPI, but that is definitely the biggest factor. Now, Flora asked about sizing files for a client for printing. I send my images size to exact 
exactly the dimensions that they are going to be printed with the highest number of pixels per inch that I have, unless they ask for a very specific PPI. So if they want a 20 by 30 at 300 DPI, that's what I'm going to give them. Now, if you've cropped your image or you simply don't have enough pixels to give it to them at that size, you can um, artificially resize up your images, but really you're not adding any quality. You can do that in Photoshop by clicking that resample uh, box and then changing the dimensions. But again, you're not really adding any quality since the software is just doubling up pixels that are already there. You can't add any more detail where there wasn't any captured. So what I usually do is let the professional labs do that resizing because they know the exact output of their printer and can make the best possible conversion for their equipment. If I have a particularly small file, I'm going to have that conversation with them and tell them that so that they can deal with it and size it up as needed. So I hope that clears up some of the confusion. If not, I'm going to do my best to answer questions in the comments below. Again, you can also go to AskDavidBergman.com, check me out for a one-on-one one um, consultation, or if you have a photo question that might help all of us here, please go ahead and ask davidbergman.com and ask, ask it on the form there, and I just might answer it on a future show. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you back here next week at 10 a.m. Eastern for a new episode of Ask David Bergman.